Hello everyone, this is Fletch from Twilight Render. Welcome to the Twilight Render Getting Started video tutorial series, Six Essentials to Rendering with SketchUp and Twilight Render Plugin. Please download the files from the link in the description below and feel free to follow along. I am an architect and designer myself, so there's no reason to be intimidated. I'm here to help, so let's dive in together. Let's get started by opening the Getting Started tutorial file. It says right here in the file name Twilight Getting Started Tutorial.skp. While modeling in SketchUp, you can improve your display performance by disabling the sun shadows, by disabling endpoints, extensions, depth cues, and profiles for edges. Then hit refresh on your style to save changes. No worries about disabling the shadows in SketchUp because Twilight will always render your sun unless you go in to disable it in the environment settings like this. But we are going to leave it enabled as we would like the sun to be shown in our test renderings. By default, SketchUp sets up animation between scenes of two seconds, which may look nice at first, but after a while slows down your workflow. Let's disable it by going to Model Info and Disable Scene Transitions. Now when you click on your scene, it will go immediately to the camera view you want. The first thing to remember while modeling to render is to maintain proper face normal orientation so that you only see front faces. In monochrome view style, if you see these blue faces, they are the back or reversed faces. Be sure to go in, right click on the blue faces, and choose reverse faces. Now let's talk about model quality. If we desire to have a photorealistic rendering, we must have a model worth rendering in the first place. Let's look at some common problems evident in this model. Here we can see the roof has no detail to it. It's a simple box. So when we render this roof, it will not look realistic. If we look at the windows, we can see the model is oversimplified and not detailed at all. This is not how actual windows would be built. Now we can see the floor here has lines drawn to represent joints or cracks in the pavers. But these lines will not actually render because they're not creating geometry. They may look good in SketchUp, but they do not help us for the rendering. Every good rendering begins with a good model. Twilight Render has added several modeling tools for pro users. Let's take a look at a few of those features now. If we double click to open this roof, we can use the Twilight built-in Select Tools, right click an edge, choose Twilight V2 Select, Select Loop. It will select the loop around the top. Now we can move and copy the loop of edges down, for instance, to add more details to this roof. If we choose Twilight V2 and select Edge Select Ring, it will select all the edges around the opposite direction, like so. Finally, there is a powerful subdivision tool built into Twilight Render Pro. If you select a face and right-click, choose Twilight V2 Faces Subdivide, and it defaults to one subdivision. Type in 2 and hit enter and it will set the subdivision to 2. Change it to 3 and hit enter again. It should show you the preview for subdividing the third time. Here, let's try 6 subdivisions. And here's what it looks like with 10. Be careful not to go too high with your subdivisions with multiple faces selected, as SketchUp can take a while to execute the command. Now let's choose 5 subdivisions and hit enter to set the variable and hit enter again to execute the command. Now we can see what it looks like with five subdivisions on this face. This is useful to create panels or tile joint lines. Okay, so if we select these two faces, and we choose Faces Subdivide, type in six and hit enter twice, you can see that the lines will divide parallel to the edges. If we choose Center Subdivide, they will remain parallel to the red and green and blue axes. If we choose grid subdivide and type in 20 centimeters, they will be on a 20 centimeter grid. And if we use triangulate, it triangulates the faces. Another powerful tool here, we've got the Greeble tool. We can use it on this ground where there's no actual geometry defining these different joints. We can go to the Greeble tool faces and what that'll do is offset each face using push-pull and push-pull it within the offset that you set down below. So right now it's set to 1. Let's say if we were to hit 10 and hit enter, it'll do a random push-pull on those between 0 and 10 centimeters. If we set it to 2 and hit enter to execute, now we can see that it's created kind of this jagged pattern. 
Now this works great if you have drawn on a surface, maybe stones, or if you've used the subdivide tool on a surface to create tiles on a bathroom wall, then you can use Greeble to offset those randomly and it looks fantastic in your rendering. Before rendering, you want to bevel all the edges that you can. This bevel will reflect light in a more realistic way, as there are very few things in real life that have a perfectly sharp corner. If we select these items, right click, and choose Twilight V2 Edges, Bevel Edges, now we can set the bevel to 0.5 centimeters and hit enter twice, and it will create a bevel. Here it's created the bevel on a flat surface, and we don't want that, so now we're going to click this edge, select loop, delete that. Now we'll run the bevel tool again. Here is 1 centimeter, 2 centimeter, and here it is with 0.5 centimeters. You can see we've already run the bevel tool on this wall and we've already beveled this wall as well. We could quickly run it on other pieces of the model, such as the bench, and so on and so forth. So feel free to leverage the bevel tool in your model to increase photorealism. Then what we would do is go in and create the window frames, doors, pool area, and the roof to be more accurate to real life. If you look at the actual images from the pavilion, we see how the roof fascia and drip edge should have appeared. And here we can see that the frames for the doors, columns, and windows have a lot more detail as compared to the original model. So keep in mind that your model should be built as accurately as possible if you want a full realistic rendering, because every great rendering starts out with a great model. Here we can see that this model was originally missing many other details it needed for a good rendering, such as the sculpture in the back, the reflecting pools in the front and in the back were not accurately modeled, how it meets the walls, so we have built these details and more in the tutorialcomplete.skp file. If you open the complete tutorial file, you can see that we have already built the fascia with the drip edge on the roof. We've built the secondary drip edge under the cantilevered canopy. We've built the frames with more details, placed a sculpture in the sculptural pool as well as improving the pool and water models. We've built the surrounding area, fixed all the reversed faces, and many other small details. Feel free to explore the complete model and find all the things that have been done to improve the model. I'm sure you will spot many more places that could be improved as you look around. So remember, looking at the steps here in the Getting Started model, we see that these steps are reversed faces. Textures and materials applied to back faces will not behave as expected. This is probably the most common problem with modeling I see on the forums. Please hit that like button if this tutorial has been helpful for you. Stay tuned for our next segment, which is about camera placement. This will be step two in our six essentials to rendering with SketchUp and Twilight Render plugin. Be sure to subscribe for more tutorials. Until next time, I'll see you on the forums.